you tell the kids about your ice cold friend? All right. Walter E. Jack Rollins is one of the quintessential unsung heroes of the music business. While few know him by name, it's not an exaggeration to say that everyone, young and old, is familiar with at least one of his songs. Rollins' best known compositions, Frosty the Snowman and Peter Cottontail, are two of America's most popular children's holiday songs. Rollins was born in Kaiser in 1906. As a young boy, he cared for his mother, who was blinded by glaucoma soon after she married. To support the family, she sold magazines on the street, and Jack helped out with a newspaper route. At night, he sat by her side while she wrote down verses she had made up. Using these words, Jack wrote his first songs. As a young man, Rollins worked at a glass plant in Pittsburgh. Then he moved to Mount Vernon, New York, where, at age 26, he met his future wife, Mary Lamb. He hired on as a baggage handler at Penn Station and wrote music on the side, selling his first song for $5. He worked at Penn Station until age 40, when, after getting an earful from an irate customer, he quit on the spot to pursue his dream of being a full-time songwriter. Gradually, the money got better, but not before he was forced to sell off some of his family's possessions. In 1948, Rollins joined music publishers Hill and Range, and in 1949, wrote the lyrics to the song Peter Cottontail, with Steve Nelson writing the music. The song was originally recorded by Gene Autry, with subsequent versions by Guy Lombardo, Roy Rogers, Dinah Shore, and many others. It went on to sell more than a million copies. As the story goes, one of the suggestions for the song's title was Reginald the Rabbit. When he and Nelson came up with the name Peter Cottontail, Rollins finished the song in 15 minutes. Here comes Peter Cottontail, hopping down the bunny trail, hippity hoppity happy Easter day. The following year, Rollins penned the lyrics to Frosty the Snowman, with Nelson again supplying the music. The song was popularized by Jimmy Durante and covered by artists ranging from Perry Como, Nat King Cole, and Elton John to the Beach Boys, the Ventures, and the Jackson 5. It was also featured in the movie Goodfellas. That same year, he moved to Hollywood, where his career flourished. In 1952, Rollins, who wrote about 500 songs throughout his career, wrote Smokey the Bear. While the USDA Forest Service's 1944 campaign featured a character named Smokey Bear, it was Rollins who added the, because he was unable to fit Smokey Bear into the lyrics. Rollins also co-wrote songs for country stars, including George Jones and Eddie Arnold. His song, I Don't Hurt Anymore, was a number one hit for Hank Snow in 1953, and Johnny Cash recorded it on his last release, American Six, Ain't No Grave. I've forgotten somehow That I cared so before And it's wonderful now I don't hurt anymore His other songs include Must We Say Goodbye, With This Ring I Thee Wed, a tribute to Babe Ruth called Safe at Home, and The Heart of a Clown, recorded by Ernest Tubb. If I had the heart of a clown After 15 years in Hollywood, he and his wife Mary decided to move to Cincinnati to be near his daughter and grandchildren. Rollins was thoughtful and caring, and as he grew older, was keenly aware of the changes in popular music. But unlike many, he had the foresight to recognize it and felt comfortable passing the torch to younger artists. We're now in a world that has moved so far forward that my style of song has gone the way of all flesh. The hard rock the kids have today, I don't stand on a soapbox and say I like it. In fact, I'll say a lot of it is not even listenable. But I will say that if the kids like it, that's all that matters because this is their world. 
We're moving out and they're moving in. He died at his home in Ohio on New Year's Day, 1973, and is buried in his hometown of Kaiser. Jack Rollins. the snowman was a jolly happy soul. With a corn cob pipe and a button nose and two eyes made out of coal. Frosted a snowman. Hey, pull a bottle pop around and around and around. Oh, Frosty. Frosty. My main man. You know, our next presenter is the host of NPR's internationally syndicated program, Mountain Stage. Early in his career, he also had a top 10 hit with Junk Food Junkie, as well as recording Frosty the Snowman for Walt Disney Records. Here to present the induction of Jack Rollins, please welcome my friend Larry Gross. Thanks so much. I wish that Jack Rollins could be here. I would like to have met him, but with, as with every great songwriter, I feel like I know the best part of him already, and so do you, because we know his songs. He wrote between 400 and 500 songs during his life, and they were recorded by some of the biggest names of his day. And through the years, it seems like almost everybody has recorded Frosty the Snowman. You heard a few versions uh, during the uh, video there of the hundreds of artists who have done it in hundreds of different styles and languages. Matter of fact, a couple of Christmases ago, we did that as a finale on Mountain Stage, and I knew, I knew the song, I'd recorded it, but I forgot. Uh, I wanted to hear it again like I do, so I went on YouTube to look up so I could get it in my mind. And what came up, but uh, a cartoon someone had posted there with the version that I recorded for Disney. So I listened to myself and learned it again. And if you think that Jack Rollins uh, has been forgotten and his work has been forgotten, I went back to that video this morning. It's now been viewed 4,816,790 times on YouTube. And I looked down at some of the comments they put under it. Uh, this song makes me cry because he melts at the end. So sad to lose a friend. <laughs> LOL. And then... Arg, Frosty, I found you. They told me you weren't real, but I knew if I wished very hard, you'd appear one day, and here you are. <laughs> and then there's one from Germany. Sommer in Deutschland. Hi, hi, Frosty the Snowman. La, 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 la. <laughs> and, of course, there's the inevitable. Frosty was evil incarnate, an animated pile of molded slush brought to awareness by some vicious, dark entity from the nauseous bowels of hell. Ah, the internet. <laughs> Jack Rollins is in a long tradition of songwriters who have struggled to make a living from their craft. Millions of people write songs, and only a few hundred are able to make it their livelihood. Jack had a day job until he was 40 years old, but he finally succeeded. He wrote a number one hit. He had many of his songs recorded, and I hope from time to time he got some nice checks in the mail. But he also accomplished something that is even more rare than making a living as a songwriter or having a number one hit. He made millions of children happy. And even though he passed away in 1973, if you go to any school holiday program this year, tears will come to the eyes of parents when their little ones sing about that magic snowman who melted away but will surely return next year. And that's about as good as it gets. Champ Zumbrun, who you'll hear in just a moment sing as Smokey the Bear, recently talked to a retired bank teller in Kaiser, West Virginia, where Jack Rollins was born and where he had a bank account. And when Champ mentioned his name, the teller grinned and she said, Jack Rollins was a little jolly old man. And when he came into the bank, he always had a warm, friendly smile. He had eyes that sparkled. His tombstone says it. Jack Rollins 1906 through 1973, Frosty the Snowman. Here accepting for Jack Rollins is his grandson, Mr. James Busmeyer. Well, I've been told to make this short and sweet, so that's what we'll do. My family is honored that you've chosen my grandfather to receive this award. 
he would have felt so blessed to be included in such company and talent as these creative West Virginians. On behalf of our family, we thank you very much.